Hello everyone, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this channel is to explain any fundamental or advanced engineering concepts in mechanical and material sciences in 3 minutes time. If you would like us to explain any new concepts then please comment below and we will come back with a video on that. In meanwhile you can also like, share and subscribe our channel so to get regular updates on it and also you please share our channel with other colleagues or students who would like to get some idea on to this. Today I'm going to explain to you about nominal and true stress strain curve. Many of our students, when they start studying solid mechanics based courses, even when they start working in engineering fields, then they sometimes struggle to understand the concept of nominal and true stress strain behavior. The idea comes from the fact, let's say if you have a new material and you really want to understand its behavior, you will do uniaxial tension or compression tests. For that, you will cut your SAM material into different size of samples. Some of the samples are shown in these figures there. You can have flat samples, you can have circular cylindrical samples, and the sizes and geometry of those samples will depend upon the standards which you are following and also which part of the work you are really working in. So you can have ASTM standard, British standard, ISO standards, and many other standards, which gives you different dimensions for your tensile and compression testing samples. Once you have cut those samples, you basically take your samples into a tensile testing machine as shown in this picture here and you, you attach your sample with a with a clamping fixture and you attach an extensometer onto your sample which will give you the real-time deformation in the samples while you have a load cell on the top of your uniaxial tension machine testing machine which gives you the forces so this way you once you start pulling your sample you get the real-time force and the deformation or displacements in your samples itself once you have forces and samples that now it's time to convert these forces and the displacements or deformations into stresses and strain so if i divide this force with the initial area of my sample then that would be my engineering or nominal stress stress of that material while if i divide the change in length with the initial length of my sample then that is my engineering or nominal strain in the material on the other hand if i divide the same force with the current area of my sample then that is my true stress and if I divide the change in length with the current length of my sample, then that is my true strain. If you look at the closely the curves for the nominal and or engineering stress strain, why and on and for also for the true stress strain curves on the right hand side, then you will can easily spot few differences. For example, both the curves are very much the same until point C, where the stress strain response is very similar, but after point C, your engineering or nominal stress strain response shows. A dip in the curve which means your material is getting softer or is going towards an instability while your true stress strain curve doesn't show that so we can also say that for smaller values of strains we basically can have the similar values of true and nominal stress strain curves however there are relationships to convert the nominal or engineering stress strain curve with into true stress strain curves or vice versa and I have provided you one of the relationships in, in the bottom of the slide. So your true strain, true strain can be computed using this formula, which says that true strain equals to the log, natural, natural log of one plus engineering or nominal strain, while my true stress is the engineering stress times one plus the engineering or nominal strain. Or I can do the vice versa calculations as well. It is very important or fundamental to understand these concepts because many of the design codes, if you're designing something, or if you're feeding your stress strain data to some computational model like FE analysis, then many softwares ask you to either put true stress strain behavior or engineering stress strain response. So if you mix them up and you don't really put the right values and right conversions, then you end up with results which can be catastrophic for your design. So that's why it's a very important concept. I hope you were able to get an idea onto that. And if you want to want us to, if you like this video, then please like it and share and subscribe to our channel to get regular updates also you can share this with your other colleagues students and your friends and so that others can benefit from it as well and if you want us to really come up with new concepts so or some concepts which are not clear to you then please again write in the comment section and we will come back with a video about that concept as well thank you very much for watching and bye for now